Well, welcome to tonight's uh, third edition of the Made This Way Talks. My name is Deacon Jeff Bennett with Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of Denver. Uh, I'm also a deacon at Holy Trinity Parish. And tonight we're going to have the very difficult topic of transgender ideology. So my goal tonight is to hopefully educate you on some terms and also let you know what's going on not only here in Colorado, but nationally and why this is such a critical issue. So we'll go through it. I have a bunch of slides. I'll probably try to handle questions at the end. Although if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, you can type them in if you're on Zoom. And uh, I'll kind of look at those as I'm going along. And if it's fit, if fits kind of where we are, I'll go ahead and try to address that. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to start with prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us together this evening to talk about one of the difficult moral issues of our time. We ask for your guidance that we better understand the teachings of the church, that we are created male and female, that we have compassion for those who are struggling with this gender delusion, but that we're able to speak the truth in love, but that we always speak the truth. Please guide this conversation and guide our efforts to better share the truth with those that we encounter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, so to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let's see here. So hopefully everybody can see it. Let me get back to slide number one so we don't jump to the, to the middle. All right, so again, we're gonna address uh, transgender ideology. Uh, there is a book out and it's referenced at the end of this thing. It's called Made This Way. And it's put out by uh, Trent Horn and Layla Miller. Highly recommend this book. It goes over all the difficult moral issues of our time. And it explains how to talk to small children that way, what the church teaches, and then how to talk to teenage children. So transgender ideology basically means that we have people who were created male and female who feel like they're in the wrong body and feel like the Lord made a mistake and that their body isn't who they are, it's what their mind says they are. So you've probably heard a lot about this going on. It's happening not only throughout Colorado in our libraries and our schools, trying to teach our young children this, but it's, it's a national, it's actually a world issue that has exploded in the last 10 years. So one of the things we need to understand when we first get into this is that we have science on our side, we have logic on our side, we have medicine on our side, and oh, by the way, we have faith on our side. All of us tell us the truth that we are created male and female, and that no matter what our mind says, the Lord doesn't make mistakes, and that we have the science, again, the logic, the medicine, all that to back up what we're saying. And we need to make sure that we are strong in our understanding of the teachings, but that also we don't allow ourselves to be lured into a false sense of compassion for people or to be bullied. And that's really what happens most of the time. The bullying actually happens from the transgender LBGTQ groups who bully us into feeling like we have to agree with them. If we're not, we're haters or we're going to be responsible for children killing themselves. And I think as we go through these slides, you're going to see that's the exact opposite. But I always like to bring that up in the beginning because we do have everything on our side, yet sometimes we're too afraid to speak the truth. And when we don't, people get hurt. And so I want to make sure that we talk about that right up front. So what we're going to talk about initially is gender. Now, it, gender, when we start talking the word gender, we fall into a big trap because there's four, at least four different definitions 
And if we're going to start having these conversations, people will hop from definition to definition. And so we want to use the word sex, not gender, because the minute we start talking gender, we fall right into their trap. So the four definitions, as you can see, the first, it's a synonym for sex. So some people think they're interchangeable. And it used to be that was the case and there was no question. The others think it's a name given to a sex stereotype that is really not the sex, it's just the stereotypes that we have or have grown up with. The other is to describe it as a sociocultural behavioral aspect of sex, you know, how we act that male gender plays with trucks and army men and female gender plays with dolls and likes flowers. The fourth is it's a name of an ideology that claims that sex is irrelevant, that it's what's ever in our mind. And our identity is self-determined, not determined at birth. So as I said, when we're having the conversations, the Catholic schools are working on this, uh, society is working on this, those that understand the truth. We need to use the word sex. And what we do, we mean is biological sex. So we need to remember we are created either male or female. And that is determined at conception. It's not at birth that people look at us and they get to decide who we are. It's at our conception. And so if we have XX chromosomes, we're a female. If we have XY chromosomes, we're a male. And every cell in our body will tell us whether we're male or female. You can't have a mix of both. You have either or. So remember, this is the science piece of it. And when we deny science and we deny truth and reality, then anything goes. And that's kind of where we are today. And so I want to make sure that we understand where people are coming from. So we're going to talk about terminology because it can get really confusing really fast. And so, just so that we're all on the same page, transgender male and transgender female. Basically, a transgender male is a female who's trying to change, who's trying to convince people and turn their body into a male. And a transgender female is a male who's trying to turn their body into a female body and live life as the opposite of what they were born. So it's confusing because a transgender male is really a female and a transgender female is really a male. And it can get really confusing when you're talking to people, uh, you're, you're thinking about it. So these are just terms that you're gonna hear on a regular basis. Uh, and that if the more you understand, the more you study it, the easier it's gonna be. But this is kind of a introduction to things we're gonna hear. Now, there is something called intersex, right? It's somebody who's born with a disorder that their bodies don't really, it's hard to tell whether they're male or female when looking at their physical body. Now this happens very rarely and they'll use this as an exception. But the bottom line is, even those that are born that either have an XX or an XY chromosome. They only have one or the other. They don't have a mix of both. So we can tell who they really are, but there was a, a abnormality during birth and it can make it tough to, see, to look at the physical body to see whether that's a male or a female. And so, but it's important that we do understand that no one is born and you get to flip a coin and you get to figure out who you are. It doesn't work that way. So gender identity is another term you're gonna hear a lot, right? It's basically the divorce of human sexuality. So gender is frequently and incorrectly used as a synonym for sex. And as we mentioned before, we wanna talk about biological sex. So gender identity, basically when they, you hear that, it's the person gets to decide who they are. Doesn't matter what they were at conception, doesn't matter if they grew up for the first 25 years of their life as a male, they get to not only change their state, because of their mindset. But there's something called gender fluidity. And we have people that come to our shelters who one day claim to be a male and the next day claim to be a female and it goes back and forth. It's whatever they feel that day. 
So you can see the slippery slope when we go from being binary, which is either male or female, to non-binary, and it's anywhere on that scale. So again, these are important terms to understand because you're going to hear a lot about them. Uh, gender dysphoria. So when we hear the word dysphoria, it means that there's a mental issue. There's something wrong with the way we're thinking and we have an issue with something. So there's, there's actually people who have uh, body dysphoria, right? They want to have a perfectly healthy arm or a perfectly healthy leg cut off because they don't feel like they should have to. Now, I know that sounds unreasonable, but we really do have people who think that way. So they have such an unhappiness with who they are that there's this delusional thinking that if they cut things off or change things, then they'll be different. Now, as we go through this, you'll see that reality is reality and it still does not make them happy. But a good example to use for people of a dysphoria is anorexia. So anorexia, right, we, those are individuals who think they're overweight. When in reality, we look at them and we see they're, they look malnourished. So it's a false belief of who we really are. Even though they can look in the mirror and see somebody very heavy, even though the world sees somebody who looks like, you know, emaciated. And so the other example we need to use is we would never go along with somebody who thinks that way, right? Because we want to make them healthy. We want to make sure that they can, that they're not going to die of, of malnutrition. So we're not going to tell somebody who's anorexic because they believe they're fat and try to get them on a Weight Watchers program. We're going to try to get them to a doctor and hopefully a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist to help them work out that disorder. And so it's the same thought process for transgender ideology. I mentioned gender fluidity. It's an ever-changing view of who oneself is. So there's the scale. We're binary, either male or female, or we're non-binary, and I can be whatever I want. And so there's this long scale that, you know, is really challenging for people. We need to really pray for people who struggle with this, because this really is a mental illness, and they need help. One of the things you're going to see in a few slides is the help is being outlawed for children 18 and younger that we're not allowed to help them or get them the help that they need. And I think it'll be an eye opener for many of us. So transition, that's the process in which a person starts to act as the opposite sex. So transition would mean they start using different pronouns. I'm sure you've heard this before. They start dressing differently. They may change their name. They're starting their transition. And a lot of times this is happening in schools without parents' knowledge. Uh, and it's deliberately kept from the parents because they don't feel like the parents can help their child, that, they're, that they would cause more pain, which anytime we take parenthood away from parents, bad things are gonna happen. So they start recognizing as the opposite sex. We have conversion therapy. So conversion therapy, is, is unfortunately a term used to cover all therapy. So the conversion therapy bill that was introduced at the state legislature last session, not this past year, but the year before, outlawed any counseling or therapy to children 18 or younger trying to convince them they are how they were created. So you as a parent, me as a parent, if our 15-year-old said that they that was, a, was a boy and thought they were a girl, wanted to go to counseling, and we wanted to get him into counseling to help them realize that they're wrong, the counselor would lose his license if he tries to counsel that person that they are who they are biologically. This is a law passed in, I think, I forget how many states now, but it's a law passed here in Colorado that takes away parents' rights to help their children with the truth. Because what we do is when we're doing something that's wrong, we outlaw the truth so that we can continue to operate as we want to operate. So again, the steps in transition, as I mentioned before, there's the social transition where we change names, clothing, pronouns. Then there's something called puberty blockers. 
So puberty blocking drugs were meant for children that really just to slow down their puberty because, you know, there could be boys who all of a sudden, you know, 10 or 11 have a mustache, right? That would be a difficult situation being in school or girls who develop way too fast. So puberty blockers were originally meant just to slow that process down a little bit. Well, now they're using puberty blockers in large amounts to totally stop the process, right? To halt the male growing into the male body and the female growing into the female body. And so they're treating puberty like a disease. And these are being prescribed like chiclets. And there is, it's, this is basically child abuse because they're allowing three-year-olds and four-year-olds and all the way up to decide who they are. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had ch several children. I have grandchildren. They're lucky if I let them decide whether they want cornflakes or Rice Krispies in the morning not whether they're a boy or a girl, and then have to affirm that. So then there's gender affirming hormone therapy. So puberty blocking drugs plus hormone therapy is basically chemical castration. We are eliminating any possibility of the boy or the girl being able to procreate. We're killing their sexual organs. This is for young children, teenagers, and this is happening in child sex clinics throughout the country on gender therapy clinics. It's happening in Colorado. It's happening throughout the world. After they do this, then there's gender affirming surgery, right? So they're cutting off, ripping off perfectly healthy organs. There are girls as young as 13 having double mastectomies right now. As I speak, this is happening all over the place. So once you do that, it's not hard to imagine these parts don't grow back, right? You can't undo cutting off a perfectly healthy organ. We need to make sure that we understand how serious this is. This is literally castrating children it's child abuse. Letting children do this to their body is abuse. We would never let anybody cut off a perfectly healthy organ. It doesn't even make sense. We would, we would get them the help they need to realize they need to keep what they were given. Unfortunately, what we see now after all this time, many, many people are seeking to try to detransition. So at the end of this presentation, we actually do a weekly radio show. It's called respectliferadio.com. Uh, I have links to several stories. Walt Heyer was a gentleman who transitioned into a woman and lived that way for about 10 years. He's detransitioned back to his male state. Unfortunately, the parts that were cut off cannot grow back. And he has been not only ostracized by the LBGTQ community and the transgender uh, following, they are actually attacking him as he tries to help other people. That's where we know whether these movements really care about the individual or not, because they, if they did, they would walk with them no matter where they were in this journey, whether they went through or tried to get back. But the minute they cease with their transgender ideology, they come in the crosshairs and get attacked. And this is happening over and over and over again. I encourage you to listen to the interview. It's about 30 minutes. Uh, very insightful. He's now working with people who are trying to detransition. So hopefully that's somewhat helpful in terms of understanding some terminology. Now, there's more terminology than that, but at some point I just want to do the basics that you're generally going to hear about. Um, the next slide I want to show you is some of the ramifications. Now, I'm sure we've heard about this before, but trying to eliminate bathrooms for males and females and allow anybody they want to go in there. Now, some people are like, well, what's wrong with that? Imagine any of us, and I have two daughters, allowing your 10-year-old daughter to go into a bathroom with men. 
because they don't even have to dress like women. All they have to do is say they think they're, they're a woman and they would be able to go into these bathrooms. Nobody would want to subject their daughter to that. And this is what's happening. And there have been sexual assaults in these bathrooms, a number of cases, because this has happened. And it's happening in some of our schools. It's happening in places of higher education, uh, certain businesses. We need to make sure the re end game of this is to eliminate the male-female sex. It's basically to create androgyny, where anybody's anybody and none of it matters. In reality, for all of us who have been around a little bit, we probably all remember the storybook, The Emperor's New Clothes. This is a classic case of The Emperor's New Clothes. Everyone is afraid to say the truth that when you're born a male, you created a male, you are a male. You created and born a female, you are a female. You don't get to make that change. We need to be able to help you, but we, but we can't be allowing our politicians to outlaw it. We're going to talk a lot about voting on Thursday and how important that is with this issue and many others. So driver's license. Now it can say sex, you can just put X. It can be whatever you want. doesn't matter. We're here in Colorado, among with other states. People are allowed to go back and change their birth certificate. So you may have lived 50 years as John Smith, a male. You can go back and change that birth certificate to say female. Uh, you can change it to whatever you want. Right? You're rewriting history. Just all for a delusion to make oneself feel better. Look, when we go along with a lie for somebody, then we are actually hurting them, right? Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's not the way and the watered down truth to make people feel good. It's the truth. We are created male and female. The Lord does not make mistakes. To go back and rewrite history and to lie to somebody about who they are is catastrophic for them. It will cause immense damage. And so we need to understand that this is what's going on all over. You may have remembered the bathroom bill in North Carolina that was about four or five years ago. There was such pressure because they wanted to say, no, we're going to keep men's and women's bathrooms and you have to go in it, that sports leagues, the NBA was th uh, pulled the, uh, the all-star game out of there. They were threatening to pull all sports out of there. The pressure put on us by ideologues is, is immense, but we have to stand up for the truth. Otherwise, we're going to be perpetuating lies and putting our children in danger. Um, so you may say, okay, how is society caving to these trans delusions? Now, I mentioned a few, right? Pri lack of privacy, bathrooms and locker rooms. Right? They want to make sure that males and females use the same space, irregardless of how uncomfortable somebody feels. I mentioned driver's license and birth certificates. Health and mental care providers are, deny, are, are denying a reality or they lose their license. As I mentioned before, it's now, I forgot, it was 18 states of banned conversion therapy. There was a nurse in Ohio that was put on leave for posting on Facebook Women have periods and men don't. You're either male or female. That was considered hate speech by the city council. And this is Cincinnati, Ohio, right? This isn't, you know, New York City or San Francisco where you'd say, okay, this is in the heartland. He wanted the nurse to be fired for stating that truth. And so what I'd like to do is share a, a, a short video that I just found yesterday. And just listen to this. It's about five minutes. I think it's important.
every single adult woman can remember a time during her adolescence or maybe her adulthood when the fact that she's female has caused her some distress. And if we are told that that discomfort is an indication that we're actually transgender, we could easily start to kind of inflate those moments and blame our bodies and blame our femalehood for our distress. No matter where you are, there are aspects that are dangerous and terrifying about being a woman. And if we don't change that now, then we are just going to continue on this path of changing women and losing women to wanting to be a man because they cannot possibly survive in this society. Gender dysphoria is real. People with gender dysphoria are really genuinely suffering. You know, a lot of us could feel discomfort with gender roles or with parts of our bodies. The question is, how exactly do we construe that suffering? And then that shapes what we think we should do about it. Puberty blockers are uh, the first step in a pathway uh, of opposite sex hormones and possible surgeries. Uh, that cause uh, permanent physical changes, uh, including changes to the genitalia uh, and sterility. Virtually 100% of children who are put on puberty blockers will go on to take cross-sex hormones. This means that puberty blockers are not a pause button. Pushing a person like myself in that direction and encouraging that person to take medical steps I think was a very dangerous thing. Um, I was not told about much of the long-term effects from my therapist. Saying there have been studies done to where you could have a male and a female brain. And it's all so luring and you're thinking, man, maybe that is what happened. Maybe that is why I'm so messed up. Or maybe that's why I like women. After almost five years on testosterone, I started to experience liver and kidney failure. However, I was not prepared or told even that kidney and liver damage could be related to cross-sex hormones. Yep, you know, if you're trans, if you say you are, and let's get this transition started, and mom's like, hold on. And the therapist is saying things like, you know, you, you, you're either gonna have a live son or a dead daughter, and you know, you need to get your own therapy to deal with your transphobia. I felt like all these success stories were out there that this whole time, why was I not doing it right? Why was everything out of control? Why was I not fixed? And when I was reading the stories of these detransitioned women, I realized it's because transitioning can't fix you. There's a lot of bogus science which is promoted um, in order to close down discussion of this area. This figure of 1% is completely unsubstantiated. The fact is that nobody follows up what happens to these kids. If you think about any medical intervention, why wouldn't you want to know all of the outcomes? You know, in what other world would there be, or what other scenario would there be when someone says, oh, we've got this technique for something, we only want to hear the good outcomes. You know, you've already done so much and you've made all these people change the way they view you. You, I mean, you gotta continue or else. You almost let your pride get in the way. And yeah, that's a mistake I'll never make again. All right, so I think that gave you a pretty good look. Now that was basically focused on women transitioning into men. You heard the voice change. You saw the effects of what puberty blocking drugs and cross-sex hormones do. 
uh, the number of women that transition to men has used to be lag behind the, the men turning, uh, wanted to transition to women. They've exploded and gone way past the number of men. Uh, starting around 2012, 2013, there really is a bullseye on women. And this is creating a lifetime of nightmares that they can never go back. And so I think, again, I'll share this PowerPoint with, uh, with Peggy and, and father, and they can share it with whoever. Uh, but these are good things to, to listen to and to make sure that, that we understand. Uh, so here's just a few facts. Uh, suicide rates are 20 times higher than the national average 10 years after sexual reassignment surgery. Now, these are studies done in, in Sweden, right? Not the most uh, conservative place in the world. So these aren't numbers that are just made up, and that study is, is referenced in the back. Uh, what you're going to be told is, if you don't go along with your child, they are going to kill themselves. What they don't tell you is, if you go along with your child and go through this whole process, they will have a 20 times higher rate of killing themselves than the general population. 100% of children who use puberty blocking drugs will use cross-sex hormones and leave them permanently sterile. We heard that in the video. Up to 98% of the children who struggle with their sexual identity, if continue, continue to be raised normally, will accept their biological sex by adulthood. If you agree with them and go through the cross-sex hormones and everything, 0% will come back until it's too late and they try to detransition. So we don't need to get all hung up when children start questioning who they are. We need to stay calm. We need to continue to raise them normally. And the chances of everything working out are quite high. If we agree with them, and I don't know too many three-year-olds who are smarter than their parents, uh, then it makes no sense to go along with them. And believe me, there are three-year-olds. We had last fall, we had a 500 person event down at St. Thomas More. We had a plastic surgeon who's a deacon come in and talk about this stuff. I had a grandmother come up to me at the thing and said, my three-year-old grandchild is being raised gender neutral by her mom and dad. This is here in Colorado because they want her to decide whether she's a boy or a girl. They don't want to influence that. That is ridiculous. We don't let our kids decide whether they take medicine, whether they eat, whether they go to school, but we're going to let them decide who they are. There is a 2,000% increase in children seeking treatment for sexual identity disorder. That's in UK, but it's, cl it's close to that number here in the United States as well. So you can see this is a big problem. One of the reference guides that I have at the end, it's called the parent, parent, parent Resource Guide. It was put together in Minnesota by a Catholic mom who has footnoted the heck out of this thing and is all science and logic. There's no faith in there. It's all science and logic as to what's going on and how dangerous this is. So there's a link at the end of this. You can get it online for free or you can order a hard copy for, I don't know, five bucks or whatever but it's free to everybody on the internet. I would highly encourage people get that and look at that. So what's going on in our schools? You know, is this really this big a problem or are you Deacon making a mountain out of a molehill and you're just trying to stir us up? Well, I wish that were the case, but unfortunately it's not. The last session here in, in Colorado, which not this past one that got cut short, the one in 2019, there was a bill called House Bill 1032 that allows and encourages our public and charter schools to teach children gender fluidity, to identify that they are allowed to teach it in any classroom, a science teacher, a math teacher, an English teacher. If it's a scheduled presentation, specifically for it, now parents will be notified. But if it's just brought up in a classroom, you as a parent or grandparent do not need to be told. Could you hear me? Yeah. Uh, telling children their sex assigned at birth, 
that, that it could be wrong. That's happening in schools, right, as we speak. Uh, and not just in Boulder. It's happening in public schools, in Fort Collins. They're allowing children to decide who they are, and they're allowing them to transition in school without, as I mentioned before, telling mom and pop, right? They're allowing name changes. They're using preferred pronouns. They're using bathrooms, counseling without telling parents. Yes, another bill passed at our legislature is that 13, up, I think 13-year-olds can find a school counselor without telling mom and dad. Again, they're trying to take away parental rights. This is insane, but it's happening in all of our schools. So here's what they're looking for in your children and grandchildren to start talking to them about gender, that they may be born in the wrong body or they have the wrong brain in their body. Depression, poor academic achievement. Boy, if that was the case, I'd have been a girl a long time ago. School was not my favorite thing. Poor family relations, isolation, frustration. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But any of us are going to look at this and say, oh, I've had that. Or, geez, I've had two of those things. Right? These are not signs of gender dysphoria. These are signs that, hey, we might want to keep an eye on it. There might be some things going on. It might be some depression. There might be some, uh, some kind of abuse going on. But we should never see these signs and automatically go to, well, gender dysphoria, you're born in the wrong body, let's get you on some drugs. But that is what's happening. And it's happening on a regular basis. So this, I'm just gonna go through this real quick. But this is basically, this is the uh, Evanston Skokie School District in Illinois. This is what they're starting as young as preschool and kindergarten. To start learning about identities, the identities of other, exploring gender toys and clothing stereotypes, all the way through sixth to eighth grade where they start learning about various activist strategies. They start doing more LBGTQ community uh, paraphernalia. They will identify a movement that they feel strong with. They'll start creating lockers and uh, posters and lockers to draw awareness on this. And this is all the way through. And then it continues into high school. This is just one example. But just so you know, most the, the people behind this is Planned Parenthood is putting together these curriculums. That Bill 1032 that I mentioned before is tempting, is tempting school districts with grant money up to a million dollars to incorporate this type of teaching into their schools. All right, scary picture here because evil is identified by its rotten fruit. What is going on here in Colorado is drag queen. Now, luckily, I mean, this is the, probably the only benefit I found from the pandemic is that the drag queen story times at our local libraries have been put on hold because of they're afraid of people getting catching the uh, COVID-19. There are drag queen story times targeting children three to six to teach them gender fluidity. Our Respect Life office has had, held prayer vigils at the Lafayette Library and the Broomfield Library. And this is going on. Parents are bringing kids in. They think it's the greatest thing in the world. We went and prayed at the Broomfield Library and Antifa showed up. We had half of the Broomfield Police Department. We had activists showed up. We had about 100 people, and we were outnumbered probably three to one. We were called the haters when they are deliberately targeting our children for drag queen story time. So they have a literal drag queen come in, read gender fluid stories, and try to convince our children that this is normal. And oh, by the way, the drag queen that came is... Uh, I think an elementary school teacher in North Glen. So just so you know, this is what's going on. I actually have a video, but I'll save that. I'll leave it on the thing just because uh, I want to make sure I stay within our hour limit and I still got a fair amount to go. But it just shows one of the drag queen story times. And I'm trying not to nauseate people at this point. 
But there's actually child drag queen story uh, shows in downtown Denver once a month. And there's children as young as 10 dressing in drag, performing on a stage to packed houses, just so you know. So I mentioned stories. Okay, well, here are just three examples of what our children in elementary school are being read, read to about and, and given. First, there's the gender unicorn. Right? You can be whoever you want to be. You can be attracted to whoever you want to be attracted to. Uh, there's I am jazz, right? This is a boy who, tur who uh, transitioned into a girl. Jacob's new dress. These things are being promoted in our schools and in our libraries. And they're being promoted to mess with the minds of our children. If we as parents don't stand up educate ourselves and fight and elect people who understand how dangerous this is, it is only going to get worse. They will continue to take parent responsibility or parent authority away and it'll be handled by the state because obviously we know, right, government can run everything, right? They can lose, they can even run a post office without losing like a billion dollars. But they're going to be the ones who tell our children what they can and cannot do. So the other side is very good at going after our children because that changes the generations to come. We need to be smart enough to fight against this. We need to make sure if our children are in a public school, we need to try to get them in a Catholic school. And I'm not here to promote, hey, get everybody to Catholic school. But if you want to avoid this happening, that's the only place you can go right now. Charter schools, some of them are good but the pressure on them is immense to cave to this. And it's only a matter of time because they are publicly funded. So just a few headlines that you can see what's going on. So a teacher in Virginia was fired for refusing to use the trans students pronouns. He wasn't calling, you know, he wasn't saying you're a boy and you shouldn't be a girl. He was just not going to use the pronouns. He was just going to use no pronouns. He was, it was voted unanimously by the school board to have him fired. I think he was a science teacher. A transgender California man, the, the courts ruled that he can sue a hospital over a hysterectomy. So it's, remember, a transgender man is actually a female. So they, wanna perform, they wanted to go to a Catholic hospital, perform a hysterectomy on a perfectly healthy woman. And the court said that they have to do it. Now, I don't think they ended up doing it. I think it's still some litigation. This one uh, will actually blow your mind because when I read this, I had to read it like three times. A trans couple had a transgender wedding. So there was a transgender man who married a transgender woman, which in reality is a man marrying a woman. But they both transitioned to the opposite sex so they could marry each other. I mean, just when you think you've heard the most ludicrous thing in the world, read the paper, you're going to find something else. Uh, transgender high school students are starring on female track teams and other sports teams. There will be, and we're going to go into this in a minute with the Equality Act, there will be an elimination of girls' sports. There will be no such thing. There'll be male sports and there'll be co-ed sports. Title IX is being eviscerated. They are allowing boys to compete against girls. Now you might say, well, what's so wrong with that? Well, one, it's taking female scholarship, college scholarships away from females who now, instead of coming in first, are coming in fourth and fifth and not placing, right? We have boys and girls locker rooms because they have to be in the female locker room. When they travel, they're mixing, they're having transgender females room with regular females who wants our daughter rooming with somebody a male a, a male student who claims to be female all this is going on if you may have seen back last october a jury ruled against a dad fighting his wife over custody because the mom wanted a girl and she had two boys and she wanted her son to go through the gender transition 
the court actually sided with mom until all hell broke loose. The governor got involved and they ended up rescinding that. But mom, who, by the way, is a pediatrician, was trying to convince the son that he was really a girl. Now, after the court ruling, the son came out and said, I want to be a boy. And so mercifully, calmer heads prevailed. But this is the kind of stuff that is happening all over. I've mentioned Ohio. I've mentioned Texas. It is in every single state. So I mentioned before, there's something called the Equality Act and I'm going to go into its repercussions, that basically makes gender, flu gender ideology a civil right in all aspects of life. This would attack the church. It would attack uh, medical institutions, schools. You name it, it would attack every institution. Now, there was this guy, you may have heard of him, Aristotle, fairly sharp guy, well before Christ, who said the worst form of inequality is to try to make unequal things equal. Just ponder that for a little bit, right? Things aren't equal, right? Life isn't fair, right? A dog, no matter how much that dog wants to become a cat, it can't happen and vice versa. So trying to make unequal things equal does everybody a disservice, but that is exactly what they're trying to do here. And so I call it the Inequality Act. Now this actually ha passed the U.S. Congress. Luckily, it never got voted on in the U.S. Senate. But these are called SOGI laws, which is sexual orientation and gender identity. So when you hear SOGI, radar should go up, right? You can't make things that aren't equal equal. No matter, two, no matter how much two plus two would love to be five, it can't happen. It's illogical and it can't happen. But what the Inequality Act is doing is trying to force everyone to ex not only accept, but embrace gender identity and sexual orientation. At No matter what anybody says, you have to agree with it. They, they, want, they want to penalize you, arrest you, fine you for not using right pronouns. They want to make sure that if you say anything, if I, if, if I were to see a transgender female and say you're actually a male, sir, they would want to have me fired. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that's going on. And so the Inequality Act would be penalizing everyday Americans for believing the truth about marriage and biological sex. You would know, it would be, you would be outlawed to, know, to be able to speak the truth. Now, right here at the bottom, it's called Bostock versus Clayton County. This was a Supreme Court decision just within the last month. So this was a case of sexual orientation, gender identity. It was a funeral home that had a dress code and requirements. And so they told one of their staff who was transitioning, he couldn't dress as a female. He had to present it as a male, he had to wear a suit. This went all the way to the Supreme Court. And unfortunately, our Supreme Court Justice Gorsuch from, from uh, uh, Colorado, wrote the decision. And this decision was atrocious. What happened was the judiciary became the legislature. They legislated basically the Equality Act in employment. So they said that the Civil Rights Act, which is Title VII, which was back in 1964, I believe, uh, means that you have to accept whatever anybody's gender identity is and treat them as, as, as a, who they say they are. This is from our Supreme Court. Now, this is in employment law, but this is going to be tested everywhere. Our churches, you name it, are going to be tested by this, and it is going to be a huge train wreck because what they've done is just open Pandora's box with this Equality Act that they couldn't get through through the legislature. And our Supreme Court decided they needed to be legislative body and not a judiciary where they're supposed to rule on law, not make law. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, so employers, we all know Jack, Jack the cake baker, right? Here in Colorado, who's been sued twice, right? The Equality Act would first force employers and workers to conform to new sexual norms or else lose their businesses and jobs. 
Now, Jack Phillips has won twice. But with this new Supreme Court thing, he may not win again if he gets, if, or any of us at that point. The medical professionals. The Equality Act would force hospitals and insurers to provide and pay for these therapies that agree with the mental illness that's going on. And it would politicize medicine by performing, perf I can't even speak, forcing professionals to act against their best medical practices. So cutting off perfectly healthy organs, it would force them to do those type of surgeries, a double mastectomy on a teenage girl, even though they know that wouldn't be the right thing to do. This is what, this is how dangerous a slope that we're in. Uh, again, it politicizes medicine. Uh, it ultimately harms families, surgical intervention. I mentioned the schools, ideology being forced in our education system and in every public venue. So what it would say is anybody who takes public money has to promote gender fluidity. And think about it, almost everybody's taken, even, you know, even if it's a small amount. And oh, by the way, those are our tax dollars that, that they're using. Again, I mentioned women's sports. Title IX was a fairness, was basically implemented to promote healthy women's sports. What the Supreme Court just did is blow up Title VII. So now Title VII is in conflict with Title IX. Now they've created a conundrum and they got to figure out how are they going to fix this. There is actually a girl in Connecticut who's suing. She lost out on scholarships because this is an actual race where two boys are racing against girls in in Connecticut and let me guess and let me you need to guess who won the races every single time right this is bonkers to say the least <clears throat> it will affect nonprofits and volunteers the equality act will hurt charities and volunteers it'll force them to do things against church teaching which we can't do Right? So we maybe have to shut down like a number of faith-based adoption and foster care agencies have had to close down in many states. Uh, this Equality Act would further expedite the ending of these type of charities unless they're going to acquiesce to it. And let's be honest, it's the charitable organizations, the, the Catholic charities, the Lutheran services. I mean, all these groups, if it wasn't for faith communities, the needs of the poor and those suffering would not be met. So that is exactly what's happening. Okay. All right. I said, I guess stick to about an hour. I got five minutes. So I want to end on a light note. There's this, and many of you may have seen this. Let me, uh, I should have probably pulled this up before, but I'll open it up now and try to share it. It's called the brain comedy routine. And let me make sure I share it. Let's see here. We're gonna start discussing men's brains, women's brains, and how they're very different from each other. Now, I wanna start with men's brains, all right? Now, men's brains are, are very unique. Men's brains are made up of little boxes. And we have a box for everything. We've got a box for the car, we got a box for the money, we got a box for the job, we got a box for you, we got a box for the kids, we got a box for your mother somewhere in the basement. We got, we got. <laughs> We, we got boxes everywhere. And, and the rule is, the boxes don't touch. <laughs> when a man discusses a particular subject, we go to that particular box, we pull that box out, we open the box, we discuss only what is in that box. All right? And, and, and then we close the box and put it away being very, very careful not to touch any other boxes. <laughs> Now, women 
women's brains are very, very different from men's brains. Women's brains are made up of a big ball of wire. <laughs> and everything is connected to everything. <laughs> the money's connected to the car, the car's connected to your job, and your kids are connected to your mother, and everything's connected to everything. It was just like... <laughs> it's like the internet superhighway. Okay? And, and it's all driven by energy that we call emotion. It's, just, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why women tend to remember everything. Because if you take an event and you connect it to an emotion, it burns in your memory and you can remember it forever. The same thing happens for men. It just doesn't happen very often because, quite frankly, we don't care. Uh, women tend to care about everything. And she just loves it. <laughs> okay. Now men, we have a box in our brain that most women are not aware of. This particular box has nothing in it. It's true. It's true. In fact, we call it the nothing box. And of all the boxes a man has in his brain, the nothing box is our favorite box. <laughs> if a man has a chance, he'll go to his nothing box every time. <laughs> That's why a man can do something seemingly completely brain dead for hours on end. <laughs> you know, like fishing. measured this. The University of Pennsylvania a couple of years ago did a study and discovered that men have the ability to think about absolutely nothing and still breathe. <laughs> you know, they connected all the wires and stuff like that and watched the brain activity and then all of a sudden, he ain't I think he's dead! Huh? You know. Women can't do it. They can't do it. Their minds never stop. And, and they don't understand the nothing box. And it drives them crazy. Because nothing drives a woman more crazy or makes her feel more irritated than to witness a man doing nothing. <laughs> All right. So I just thought, you know, we had a hard subject, but there is, there is really is a message to this, right? Men and women are different. Men don't have women's brains and women don't have men's brains. It doesn't work that way. So this is obviously a comedy routine, but it does get the message across that God doesn't make mistakes, right? We see that and laugh because we know how true it is, right? I mean, I, my wife would probably say, all I have is a nothing box. I don't even have anything else in there, which, hey, I'd be okay with that. Um, but it really is important to understand that we are created male and female and that we need to defend the truths of science, medicine, logic, faith, because when we don't, people get hurt. And in the end, you're going to have people who are detransitioning, and it was said in that video, that we're not told the truth. And, they're, and they're, they're gonna say, and I've heard this in other videos I've watched, I don't know that I would have listened, but I wish somebody would have told me the truth. Then maybe I might've made a different decision, but everybody goes along with it because they're afraid of being called a bigot or a hater. 
When in reality, when we don't share the love and truth of Jesus Christ, then we show how little love we have for our fellow man. So it's just a reminder that we need to educate ourselves on these issues and we need to be able to speak up on these issues and be able to take the abuse that we're going to get because we are right and we're trying to lead people to the truth, not water it down and just try to make them like us. Because as we all know as parents, that never works. We try to be a kid's friend and can't be their parent, especially when they're younger. And that's the point of this whole thing. So this is the presentation. Here is a resource list. And uh, I see Peggy's got her hand up, but just, I will share this PowerPoint. You have it on here, but I would highly recommend I have uh, videos and everything. Go ahead, Peggy. Okay, a couple questions. Thank yeah. you, first of all. That was really good. Um, is intersex, is that just at birth or as the child develops, does it become clear what their sex is? Uh, usually at birth, uh, there's the genitalia is not forming properly. And so at birth, you can tell there's something wrong and it, it, you can't tell whether it's a boy or a girl when you look down between the legs. It's just not, you know, obviously you can't tell breasts or anything at that stage. So really it's right. a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you're not, it's a malformation of the body in the sexual organs that makes it hard to tell. And you can tell at birth that that's an issue. It's not something that you grow into. It's, it's something that's apparent at birth. Okay, thank you. Um, next question. So a transgender female, so someone that's actually male, mm -hmm. my own personal experience with individuals that that applies to mm -hmm. is that they're actually attracted to females. Uh, sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. I mean, it's, okay. It, I don't that you can make a general statement about that, but it's not uncommon, right? For a male to transition to, to tr transition to a female and be attracted to females, right? So their attraction is normal, but for some reason, their own perception of who they are is not. So there's not a, from any study that I've seen, there's not a general rule of thumb on that, but it's not, it's not unrealistic and it, and it does happen that they have a, a general attraction to the opposite sex, but they still, their own body, they're not happy with it and they transition. So it's almost like, you know, it's almost like them being like a lesbian when they're really not, it's really a male attracted to a female. It's really right. confusing. And, and that's the big problems with the bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, because that, look, pre predominantly it's men going into women's bathrooms. I mean, that's the preponderance of the thing. And again, there's, there's been attacks in there. It's, it's very uncomfortable for women. And in the end, you know, it's really that the women's feelings don't matter, right? It's all about the delusion and taking precedence over a common sense concern that no one would want their five, six, seven, 10 year old daughter in a bathroom uh, with, with men in there and they don't have to dress up, right? I could go in there right today and say, look, I feel like a female. No one would be able to stop me in some of these places. How comfortable would somebody be in there? Not at all and, and rightfully so. Hmm. Okay, thank you. And just one last question. Yes. So as, as an educator, I've had two instances where I've had students whose parents have decided to transition. Okay. And this has been devastating for those children. Is there research, you know, all of a sudden, oh, sorry, you can't have braces. Sorry, you can't have piano lessons. Dad's got to transition <laughs> and we got to pay for that. I mean, I mean, those are just an example of the impacts, but, you know, of course, there's all kinds of other impacts. Is, the, is there any research or is this just all so new that? Uh, I mean, there is research. I mean, the problem is the kids will be shamed into trying to live the truth, right? So in the end, a parent's trying to say, okay, uh, Johnny, you actually now have two moms because dad has transitioned into a female. So 
there really is little help for those children. Um, other than if, you know, that's why we need to educate ourselves. You know, the clergy needs to educate them. They need to be able to go to a place who somebody is going to speak the truth to them. And the truth is that individual who's going through the transition is struggling with a delusion, right? Of they're in the wrong body, right? We would never perpetuate that. And so we maybe can try to help the kids understand in terms of where finances go. I mean, you know, you're pretty much, there's not much we can do. Uh, but that's where the other parent needs to stand up and defend those children, right? To go along with a lie hurts everyone. There was, there was a child in, it was California. I heard this interview, a woman was saying that the child, they were teaching the kids in school that they could be whoever they wanted to be. This one little boy came home petrified that if he touched his sister's clothing, he would want to be a girl. This was a five-year-old who was afraid to touch any clothing of his sister because it would make him want to be something he's not. Mm -hmm. So the effects on children are immense. And that's why we need to speak up and defend children, elect people who are going to defend children. And as, as clergy, as laity, we need to be able to speak to this and let the children know they're not crazy, right? This is something that, that is a problem and they need help, not that it should be agreed with. It, it is really just a tough, tough situation. Yeah, what, what I saw emotionally is that it was worse for these kids. And, you know, this is just my personal opinion and my observation, yeah. Yeah. but worse yeah. than a death in the family. I mean, just devastating. Well, it kind of is a death in the family, right? You're losing a father or a mother. Yeah. Right? I mean, in reality, that's what's happening to a child. And they're telling a the child, okay, your reality to this point is now all changed. What you believed and what you saw was never true. It's all about me. So it really is a selfish act um, that, again, it just hurts every, nobody wins from this. There is no winner other than the people that profit by prescribing the drugs and doing the surgeries. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's all I have. And I really appreciate your talk this evening. And I do feel better prepared to go out and speak the truth in love. Yeah, and that's the part. We got to have compassion for these individuals because they are struggling. But compassion does not mean agreeing with something that's not true. And so Thursday when I talk, who's ever still on, uh, this is why voting with a Catholic conscience is critical. This is just one of several areas I'm going to touch on Thursday night. Okay. Well, thank you, Deacon Jeff. And if you could please close us in prayer. Okay, I can do that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, every day you give us is a gift. Every day you give us is an opportunity to share you with those that we encounter. We ask for your continued blessings, your graces, that we may be the light that we were called to be at our baptism. Please continue to walk with us. Give us the courage to speak the truth and the wisdom to know how as we continue our journey to our final homeland with you in all eternity. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you.